All right. Well, good morning, everyone. Welcome to today's Exploring by the Seat of Your Pants event. My name is Joe Grabowski, and I will be your host for today. Uh, we couldn't be more excited to be hosting another event in partnership with the Gore Downey and Chani Wenjack Fund. So the Downey Wenjack Fund is part of musician Gore Downey's legacy and embodies his commitment and that of both the Downey and Wenjack families to call Canadians to action in solidarity with Indigenous peoples of this land. So the goal is to continue the conversation that began with Chani Wenjack's residential school story and to support the reconciliation process through awareness education and action. So we've got an amazing group of classrooms who are just starting to tune in with us now. They are live on camera. They are live via YouTube. So I wanna give a shout out to those YouTube classrooms across Canada. Don't forget that you can still get in on the action today. There's a chat sidebar in the right. Introduce your class, let us know where you're watching from. And of course, send us in some questions and we'll work those in today. And then today we are absolutely thrilled uh, to have Chani's niece Harriet Visitor joining us today. She's an experienced educator and community leader, continuously striving to improve outcomes for youth. She spent over 30 years uh, advocating uh, for First Nations communities and education as well as social development. She's also been a leader in the development of the Secret Path curriculum as a board member of the Downey Wenjack Fund as the representative for the Wenjack family. So Harriet, it's such a treat to be hosting you today. We've got some amazing classrooms hanging out with us. We're thrilled to get to know you a little bit better, learn a little bit of your story, and then we'll turn the classrooms loose with a little Q&A action. Good morning. Uh, my name is Harriet Visitor, and I'm an educator with the q uh, District Public School Board in Sulacote, Ontario. And I'm very um, honored and very thankful to be able to uh, share my story and my experience with you. First of all, I want to acknowledge that we are on the Wishkagan territory of the, the people in this area, much a beautiful, beautiful uh, territory here, uh, very peaceful. And I just recently moved here and I'm very thankful to be here. So let me begin by talking about myself. I am the daughter of Daisy Monroe, who is the matriarch of our uh, Winjack family. She's the oldest uh, sister. And um, I had been waiting, I guess, for many years. Um, I've been an educator for many years. Um, I've taught in a uh, private school. I've taught in uh, federal and provincial schools in Ontario. And last year, I recently taught at a federal school in uh, Quebec, in Northern Quebec, in the home community of my, my husband and our children. And so, as an educator, um, I have been waiting for many, many years for um, this story to be shared with me. Yesterday was the sixth, would have been the 66th birth, birthday of my late uncle, Charlie. And I thought about him yesterday. I thought about my mom and, and uh, his sisters. And I thought how I had waited many, many years for um, his, share, his story to be shared with us. I was talking to my mother this morning and we were re reflecting on that. I never heard about my uncle. Um, I think my son must have been about three or four when my mother had taken us to visit the Cecilia Jeffrey Indian Residential School in Kenora. She wanted to see the site and she brought us my son and I was watching my son just kind of walking around and at a distance my son and I watched as my mom approached the the site and I never asked her questions. It was always something that was never shared um, in our home. We knew something as children. We knew something um, was different in that the way my parents were, but we knew there was always something that they weren't sharing with us. And I knew growing up that it was a topic that I couldn't ask and I didn't ask. So I waited and waited. And um, I went to um, Trent University for an elders conference um, when I was in college and uh, 
I remember seeing, stumbling upon this Wenjack theater. And I was, I walked in, I sat, and I had so many questions still. But I knew at that time that it wasn't, I wasn't supposed to ask yet. And so I didn't. Throughout the years, uh, my mother would share little bits and pieces of, of her late brother. And I would ask little questions to her, but I knew that it was something that she really kept and guarded and was not ready to share with, with us. So I had to wait. I, I learned about, um, so we were never really taught any anything about residential school growing up. We knew it was a part of our lives. I knew it was a part of our lives when I was a young adult. But before then, I just, you know, you just thought everything was quite normal. And um, it wasn't until I went to college and I began to learn, I began to study, I had more questions, and yet I, I still had to wait. It was still an area that wasn't talked about and I knew not to not to ask her so I kept waiting and um, I remember attending um, university at Lakehead University and um, a group of us had got together and shared a um, presentation a residential school presentation with um, with the students and any faculty that wanted to attend I believe that was one of the first and um, it was very, very hard for us to do. I've attended, uh, myself, I've attended um, Poplar Hill Residential School and Crystal Lake Residential School. And um, so shared, so I knew a little bit about it, but I didn't know my mother's story. I knew that residential school had, was a big part of our lives in, in our home. And so I had to wait. I had to wait until she was ready. And I think it was in 2016, we had left um, Washkaganish, Quebec, and we were coming to, I believe, Val d'Or. And my husband and wanted to quickly get into the hotel so we can watch the last, I guess, the last concert that Tragically Hip was doing. As we got in to the room and he turned on the TV. I, I stood there because what I saw was Gord. Gord was um, speaking and, and talking about, um, talking about me, talking about us, to the to the world, to his audience, to the prime minister. And right there, I there was just something, a connection or something. I said, you know what? This this man acknowledged us. I knew who he was in terms of his uh, being the lead singer of the Tragically Hip, I've heard some of their songs. And, but I was so, I felt such a connection as to who is he, that he would say this, that he would acknowledge me, acknowledge us. I felt uh, something really moved me about um, just hearing that. That's the only part of the concert that I ever got to listen to was Gord uh, speaking out. And then um, little did I know that in September, I would finally meet him. And uh, we flew up to Ogoki to meet up with Gord, Mike, Patrick, and numerous others. And I remember being in the clinic in, in Martin Falls and I brought my two children with me. I always think it's important that they uh, accompany me when possible to different events. And uh, I remember sitting there on the floor. There was, you know, people sitting around and there was no room. So I sat on the floor. I wanted to sit on the floor. And I remember listening to my mom and my aunts and Gord talk. What I had waited for decades to hear, I was finally hearing at that point, hearing about the uncle that I never met, how much 
of an impact it has been on my mom and her sisters. And um, so I just sat there, the teacher and me became the students and I, I just sat there. And um, it's, it was, it had taken many, many years to, for my mother to be ready to share. And maybe she was waiting for me to be ready to listen as well. So it was a, I had waited and waited and the time had finally come for me to hear the full story and to finally meet him, I guess you would say. And um, all my, everything that led up to that point, you know, I, I really believe our, our steps are directed and people come into our lives and we meet people. And I knew that when I first saw Gord on the TV, I knew that there was just something and I was, I knew I was going to meet him. I, I didn't know when, I didn't know how, but there was just something I knew that I was going to meet. I was going to meet this person. And meeting him has really impacted my life, has really um, changed my life, I guess, um, in a good way. And uh, I'm really thankful for um, what he's what he's brought in into into my life and into my life as a, a mother and a, and as an educator. Um, I think back um, yesterday, I was thinking back to um, my late uncle Cheney and how his life, you know, he, he, he was, he wanted to go home. My uncle wanted to go home. He was lonely for home and he should have been at home. And, you know, eventually he ended up dying going home. And that's the story. In, in its simplicity. And at a time in our history when it was so uncommon for young people, our people to advocate and speak for themselves, he did. He had the strength and knew what he wanted. And I always think of that when faced with um, anything that I think of um, what what his um, what his life has meant to me, and um, in terms of being a teacher as well. In um, teaching our students about themselves, about our history, knowing that I too didn't didn't learn a lot, and I had to search out, I had to ask, and now. With, with my late uncle's story and Gord bringing it out, um, it has allowed a lot of open dialogue within, within our family, within my mother, and sharing her experiences and sharing more of, of uh, my late uncle. I remember when um, we were at the concert, the first concert in Ottawa, and I was sitting, I believe I was sitting beside my Aunt Pearl, probably first or second row. And as soon as the animated um, and the songs came on, I, uh, I wept. I, I, I wept because I never knew my uncle. I never had the chance to know my uncle. So therefore I never had a chance to mourn my uncle. And it gave me something so physical that I can connect with. I could connect with the screen. I could connect with him. I looked at him and, and I thought, you know, it just gave me something that I needed. I needed to connect with, you know, and I'm, I'm always grateful for, for Gordon, Jeff Lemire and the way he captured my uncle. And for me, that animated uh, um, story helped me connect with, with the uncle that I never got a chance to meet. All right. Well, Harry, thank you so much for sharing that story. I know it's not easy. I know it's been, it's evolved for you and your family being able to share uh, that story, but being able to share your uncle's 
uh, story has really created this amazing legacy that is resonating with classrooms across Canada. So I really appreciate um, hearing the story and, uh, and your perspective on the story. So thanks so much for sharing that with us today. And just to add to that, a little question about uh, being an educator. Um, as an educator for many years, obviously you've, you've touched many students, you um, have worked on the curriculum, the Secret Path curriculum as well. How important is it for you as an educator to be sharing this story and have a role in creating and shaping that curriculum? I think in terms of being an educator, I know that I've waited to be a part of something like this, not knowing that it was actually going to be my own history, my own family history. I think and so it's important that our students hear the whole history and being a part of being able to write the curriculum and be part of that has been probably one of the most rewarding experiences in my education life as a teacher. It hasn't yet been released, but I know that once it's released, it's a very good curriculum and there's a lot of people that put a lot of their heart into it. And I think it's important if we, when I was thinking about um, in 2017, when Canada celebrated its 150th birthday, I remember, um, and I want to share with you something that I was at an event with um, in Toronto where there were ministry, uh, ministry people and the audio audience was just ministry people. And um, I want to share this with you. I was reflecting on this and this post came up the other day. Every time I watched a secret path, I have viewed it through many eyes. I have viewed it from the viewpoint of a daughter whose mother attended this residential school with her sisters and little brother. This was the source of pain in our family. I have viewed it through the eyes of a niece searching to connect with the uncle that I never had the honor of knowing. If he was anything like my mom and my aunts, I'm sure he was, I would have adored him. So I find myself grieving my loss, but I've learned about courage and determination by his drive to go home in a time in our, in a time in our history where it was uncommon for someone so young to exert his own rights. Miigwech uncle for this lesson. I will always be reminded of it when I am faced with challenges. I have viewed it through the eyes of a residential school um, student, um, survivor. I have viewed it through the eyes of um, an educator. I have viewed it through the eyes of a mother who, with two beautiful children. Maybe it was because behind me sat a room full of people from different sectors of the ministry, or maybe because this year Canada celebrates 150 years. Those railway tracks, those, rail, those railway tracks, I keep looking at those railway tracks. It was those railway tracks that connected the colonies. Those railway tracks are a symbol of expansion and they were important in the creation of Canada. It was those railway tracks that carried native children to residential schools. And it was those railway tracks that my uncle Cheney died beside trying to go home. I find myself standing beside, um, I, saw, I find myself in Canada standing beside one another, coming back to those railway tracks. So I'm reminded of what Gord said, Canada, what are we going to do with the next 150 years? And I think that it's important that um, our, the whole history in terms of um, everything is, is shared with our students that they need to um, hear, they need to hear the whole story. And I think that, and I've shared this at the Canadian Screen Awards, I had a conversation with my cousin Jenny and I was at the Canadian Screen Awards a couple of years ago, and I had the opportunity to go up on stage and, and um, accept an award with Mike and Jeff, Justin Stevenson and Patrick. And um, my speech was basically this. My uncle Cheney's story is not just my family's story, but it's the story of 150,000 Indigenous children who were sent away to residential schools. They were taken from their families. If you looked at it in terms of its enormity and its impact, that's 300,000 set of parents, 
600,000 set of grandparents. That's enormous. So that's, when I think of that, I know that it's important that our, our history be shared and, and taught in our schools. And as educators, we have a huge influence and a responsibility to, to create that awareness and to educate our students. Well, Harry, thank you so much for sharing that with us. Those are powerful words. And, um, you know, this, I think this curriculum is really gonna have a huge impact uh, on students across Canada because they do need to know that history. They need to know the good and the bad of Canada. And there's, there's some of both. So it's really important that uh, we do share history and we share it accurately. So on that note, Harriet, we have classrooms joining us from across Canada. They're joining us live via YouTube. They're joining us on camera. We're gonna open things up and give them a chance to ask you some questions. So before we do that, I do wanna give a shout out to some classrooms on YouTube because we're starting to get some introductions there. We've got Northern Dancer Public School joining us in North Oshawa. We've got some students who are tuning in um, at home because it's a, a no bus day for them. So this group is joining us from Edenwood Middle School in Mississauga. We've got Frontenac Public School in Burlington. We've got a group joining us in British Columbia, Algonquin Public School in Woodstock, Ontario. So we have lots of classrooms joining us. I'll do a few more shout outs. Sacred Heart in Evanston, Saskatchewan. Uh, looks like Lynx from Lamont. Uh, Alberta is joining us. Lots of amazing classrooms uh, tuning in live today. But let's start off with a question uh, from one of our live classrooms. So we are going to jump into um, Mrs. Gill's group. They're grade five sixes. They're hanging out with us in Ontario. Let's get that microphone turned on. How are we doing, Mrs. Gill's class? Good. Good. Okay, Matthew, you're up. So we're going to do something a little differently here today. We're going to break the question rule. We actually want to share some things with you today. So I have three students that are excited to tell you a few things we've been up to. I think I've seen a few. I've seen the door. <laughs> yeah. Beautiful door. Our class did a door and we decorated it. And we did um, the picture on Secret Path where um, Gord was on the railroad tracks that Chani died on. And then we painted Chani in with Gord. Beautiful. I've actually saved that picture so I can show it to my mother. So um, we, d we did a wax museum uh, with five kids from your class. And I played Chani Wenjack and I made um, a board that has information about Wonderful. And we did a fundraiser where we each created Indigenous artists themed and winter. We each created at least one winter themed card inspired by Indigenous artists. We sold 50 two boxes and each box and for each box um ten dollars was donated to the chan is going to be donated to the chaney one jack fund so we're donating 520 dollars thank you on behalf of the fund thank you thank you for doing something and thank you for continuing to create awareness and educate educating others. Thank you for that. All right. And thank you for breaking the question rule and sharing with us because I think, you know, many of the classrooms tuning in are legacy classrooms. So it's, it really is awesome to have an opportunity to see what the classrooms are doing to spread the word and, and carry on uh, your uncle's legacy. So we're going to jump to another live classroom. Now we're going to go to New Liscard, uh, Ontario. We've got some grade eights hanging out with Mrs. Taylor. Let me get that microphone turned on. How are we doing grade eights? How, how my kids in seven, eight, grade seven, eight, participate in reconciliation? I think you can participate by learning. You can participate by learning of my uncle's story, learning of other stories of creating awareness, uh, within your school, within your community, and um, just 
basically what you're um, what you're doing now is participating. I think that's the greatest thing that because in participating, you're demonstrating respect. And and you're acknowledging exactly what I always say Gore did when he was speaking. He acknowledged me and in, in, in acknowledging me, he respected me. So I think what you're doing is exactly what needs to be done. Absolutely. And if, if I might add Harriet as well, uh, the listening is so important, but you know we host a lot of of science and exploration events as well on this channel. And uh, oftentimes we tell students that as well as the listening is being the teacher too, is okay. going out and telling the story and then that amplifies the story as well. So simple you know, act of sharing what you've learned with others can have a huge impact that ripples onwards. Exactly. All right, awesome. Let's see, uh, shout out to a few more classrooms. We've got Milk River. Uh, joining us in Alberta. We've got Kenora, uh, Ontario joining us. We've got grade nines hanging out in Medicine Hat, uh, Alberta. So send us some questions and uh, we'll make sure that we work some of those in. I also want to give a quick shout out to a classroom who's live on camera with us. It's a uh, grade nine class. They're joining us in Calgary, Alberta, uh, Mr. Lafferty and Miss Ye's class, but their microphone's not cooperating today. So I'm going to spotlight their video and if you guys want to wave like crazy for us so we can see there you go we can acknowledge you guys there perfect so don't forget uh have your teacher use the chat sidebar and send us in a question or two uh, and we will work those in we're going to go to a grade seven eight class now uh joining us from sue lookout uh, mrs palumbo's class let me get their microphone turned on now there it is oh mrs palumbo i need you to uh, unmute for me. It's not working on my end. There we go. Alberta. How are we doing, Sue? Look out. Great. Yeah. Hi. Okay, Riley, go ahead. What is your vision for the legacy project? Can you say it louder? Say it louder. What is your vision for the legacy project? The legacy, legacy schools. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's yeah, a national. Your, what your vision is going to be going forwards for the legacy project? Our, the Legacy Fund is a fund that's designed to encourage, to uh, engage, empower, and connect students and educators to further reconciliation through awareness uh, and action. So it's about education and action. And I believe that's our focus and our goal will, our goal is. All right, let's take a little trip now to Vermilion Bay in Ontario. We have some grade seven and eight students with Mrs. Elliott. Let's get that microphone turned on. How are we doing, boys and girls? Good. Hi. Hi. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you for sharing you and Chani story. The other. We had the same question as a different group. <laughs> That's okay. What was the question? It was how, what are some ways you think that youth can help with reconciliation? All right. Harriet, I wonder if we can build on that a little bit, because I'm sure you've seen many examples of classrooms across Canada who have, have done different projects, different initiatives. Maybe we could share a couple of those, if any come to mind. I think if, if I were to look at the different ones that I have seen, I see that there have been walks, there have been presentations, there have been days where uh, I know for us, we've set aside a week where we've talked about residential schools and educated our students. We, uh, we were in a walk with our, sisters, our sister high school. So there's no, numerous things that schools can do to um, create awareness. Many have done different drama plays and music presentations and, you know, uh, murals and paintings and written letters. And it's all about educating and talking about something that wasn't talked about before. And talking about it, um, using different um, activities to create awareness within 
your classrooms with, within your school community. So there are numerous um, activities that's, uh, that schools have done and can continue to do. And it's about educating yourself and in educating yourself, you become informed and you act on that information that you've learned. All right. And so I'm going to grab a question from the online community right now. And it's from our group in Kenora, Ontario. And they're wondering about where the name Secret Path came from. Do you know much about the, the story behind that name? I, from my understanding, I believe it came from one of Gord's 10 poems. And I believe it was the path that my late uncle was on, on his journey home. Because on the tracks, for me, he was, he was already home. He wasn't at the school, so it, for him, he was already home. So I think it was that his path home. And I know that it's, it's, a, it's a song, it's one of the poems that Gord wrote. All right, so our class in Alberta that's joining us, they've sent us in uh, a few questions here right now. So let me grab uh, one from here. All right, so the first one here is, how do you think Gore Downey has changed or impacted uh, the advocacy for Indigenous peoples and residential school survivors? In Gore, bringing out my late uncle Cheney's story, and putting it out in the way that he did and, and uh, alongside with our family and his friends, I think he created um, discussion. He created an open dialogue where um, it, could, it was talked about again. He pushed it because he could. And um, I think that's what he, I, I know that's what he did. And I know that with not just my Uncle Cheney's story, but there are going to be numerous other stories um, out that people are going to share too. He just created um, an avenue or, for people to, to learn again. Yeah, he really used his, um you know, his celebrity and, and, and such to, to, to push out that message in a really big way. Um, you know, a lot of times we, we look at the media and we see celebrity being used the wrong way. Um, but he really used it for a platform to make a real difference with the last few years of his life. So that's exactly. pretty special. He did. Um, let's see, we need to visit Mrs. Salisbury's class. Let me get their microphone turned on here. So Mrs. Salisbury's class is joining us from Sarnia, Ontario today. It looks like some fourth graders and the microphone is on. How are we doing fourth graders? Can you try that a little closer, a little louder for us, bud? What does the foundation mean to you? The Downey Windjack Fund Foundation. Yeah, he's wondering what does it mean to you personally to know that it, you know, it exists and it's out there and, and having an impact. Okay, um, I sit on the fund as a co-founder with Mike Downey, and we have um, amazing people that sit with us in, provo in promoting and, and engaging and creating awareness. I also sit as an education advisory to the fund as well. Personally, it has done so much in terms of just um, my Uncle Cheney's story. If I, if I will add something very personal to this, um, when we were at the concerts in Ottawa and Toronto, I had met for the first time four cousins that I never met before. It was the first time meeting that they were adopted out and I never met them. So it was a very personal homecoming time for those four cousins in our family. And the fund and Gordon Linda, Gord was very uh, good in keeping us together because it was something other than if you weren't a part, if you didn't know us, you wouldn't know that 
you know, we were meeting some family for the first time that were taken away. So it was a very emotional time. Um, and some of that and, and, and seeing the changes in my, my mother, um, unless you've, I've begun to see that um, my mother never hugged me when I was a child. I don't recall my mother ever holding me or hugging me. And I longed for that many, many times. And this is just another um, effect of um, residential school. And, and you'll hear more of these stories because I have more and more people coming up and sharing these types of stories. So I do understand what they felt. And when my mother, I've tried to hug my mother numerous times and um, she just wasn't, she couldn't. So when it's all, um, the day that Gord passed away, I was about a half an hour out of Thunder Bay and I received word that Gord passed. And I remember hearing that and I wept. We were actually going to Thunder Bay for the wake of my, um, my Aunt Pearl's daughter, my cousin Catherine. And I remember walking into that um, funeral home and my mother greeted me and she hugged me. And my husband said to me, your mom hugged you. And when my mom hugged me, I whispered, thank you, Gord. Because she embraced me and she didn't freeze. And those are some of the personal things that this fund, and knowing that you may not see it, but there is change happening when people are sharing uh, a topic that has never been talked about before. I see it with, because I see the change within my own family. And I will always be part of the fund because I know and I see the change that's happening at our community level with our people because I see it in my home, in my family. All right, Harriet. Well, we're gonna take one more question from YouTube today because um, our time is going quickly. I want to take this one from a British Columbia group and they have a little two part question for you. They're wondering about um, Chani's uh, parents' full names and then how long you attended residential school. Well, my Shumas, uh, James Winjack, and my Kokum's name was Agnes Winjack. My Shumas was a hereditary chief. Um, he was an Anglican minister, a fiddle player, and he traveled the barge up to Moose Factory and back down to Martin Falls, Ogoki during the times when he would take his first. I attended uh, Poplar Hill, I'd say for half a year, Poplar Hill Residential School. And I attended Crystal Lake, the same. I attended half a year. All right. Well, Harriet, it's been such uh, an honor. It's been a privilege to have you with us today, uh, to have you share your story. I know it's not easy. Uh, you really opened up uh, to us today. And I think the classrooms really appreciate um, you know, you being so candid. And we're excited to share as well that on the 23rd, uh, that we'll be hosting Daisy and Pearl at 1.30 p.m. Eastern uh, for an event. So I think that's gonna be a really uh, important event to have. I'd like to say something in closing. And I know that it's, um, and many times when I have to share about residential school, um, I'm, when I'm teaching or when I'm talking, I'm sharing, you know, I'm looking into the eyes of our future. I have the honor of doing that every day. And I know that our history is not, there's part of it that's not nice and part of it that's painful. And I try to um, tell my students, I know that, I feel that I've experienced it. And when I look at our history, I look at my students and I say, it's up to you now to write 
what our story was going to be. I know what our story was like. I, I, I experience it. I see it from the past. In terms of the future, it's you that's going to help write this story now. I know it's uh, quite painful, but I know that I see the resilience in our people, the strength in our people. And um, I'm very excited in terms of what our future is going to be like with, with our, in the hands of our youth and how we need to um, help them, guide them, support them in what our story is going to be like for the next 100 years. Absolutely, Harriet, I think that is the perfect way uh, to leave off today's event. We've had an amazing group of classrooms uh, both live on YouTube and here on camera with us. So we appreciate uh, you joining us. We appreciate all the legacy schools who do so much to help uh, continue spreading the story, making sure students understand this part of uh, Canada's history and what we can do to, to help make things right, get closer to reconciliation, to actually do something instead of just um, you know listening to the stories. So what I'm going to do, Harriet, if it's okay with you, I'm going to turn the microphones on and we'll just give the classrooms a chance just to say thank you for uh, today. So boys and girls, I'm going to turn the microphones on if you guys want to say, you know, a big thank you from your classroom and then we'll sign out for today. So here we go. Microphones are coming on. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Well, once again, boys and girls, thank you so much uh, for joining us. Thank you for the great questions and Harriet. Thank you. Thank you for sharing with us. Um, and we look forward to hosting you for another event in the future. So thank you, everyone. Enjoy the rest of your days. And we're going to sign off for today. Thank you.